Welcome back to part nine of which of the Schmincke super granulating colors do you need to buy and which can you probably make yourself. Today we are looking at the desert palette, which is the second to last palette in this series. I can't believe we have made it to this point. We have covered tundra, volcano, urban, shire, glacier, deep sea, haze, and forest. And after this, we just have galaxy left. And so we are going to get into filling out all the information on all the colors. And then we're going to get into swatching. I have triple checked all this information. We've had three videos where the pigment information for some of them has been different, depending on the site you're looking at, where I have accidentally pulled the wrong colors. I have triple checked. I have everything we need. And we're going to get into this. Everything is all labeled. I do like when palettes have sort of a theme. And so this one is another one where it's a PY 159 theme where it's all but one color include that. And I do enjoy that. I think the cohesion is really nice. I wish more of the super granulating palettes had that. I think only this one and Urban, maybe one other, have that sort of overarching theme of a single pigment being in almost all of the colors. I wish that they would picked a pigment for each of the palettes. I think that would have been really cool. Desert Orange is interesting. I think, I think it might be my favorite orange in this series. That being said, I don't really like orange watercolors in general. So trying to pick a favorite orange in this series is going to be hard. Desert brown is quite orange undertoned, which is nice in the sense that it works with the rest of this palette. There are some of these palettes that I find there sort of feels like there's one color that's an outlier or there's one color that's too similar to the rest. And forest, forest brown, like really doesn't seem like a brown. In this case, the brown feels like it's part of the set while still having the same undertones as the rest of the set, which is something that I wish that they kept in some of the other palettes. I am finally getting my wish of a gray that is not blue undertoned. I think we've had five so far that have all been blue undertoned. We're finally getting a different undertone in a gray and I am so ready for it. Do I use yellow undertone grays all that often? No, but did they need that many blue undertone grays in the super granulating series? Also no. And then we've got desert green, which is, in my opinion, the oddest color in the entire super granulating series. I have it in my palette. I don't know that I've ever used it in a piece. I can't really figure out how or where to use it. It's a green that's got cadmium red underneath. And so you really see the red, like the red granulates out of it. And I've just never been able to figure out where and how to use it. So if you have any advice for where you use desert red, let me know. So I'm going to scooch these out of the way and we're going to start mixing. So desert yellow is PY. And PBR. Mm -hmm. 
don't know that I got that in one. Let me try to make it more neutral. Oh. Here's a Q-tip. There, 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 there. Oh yeah, that looks better. There we go. So, the Daniel Smith one. So I'm actually just going to use the Daniel Smith one in all of these mixes in this palette going forward. Except that it doesn't appear in any other palette going forward. Cool! Cool, cool, cool. 33. I do like this way of mixing, making the orange with the brown. Nice way to yeah, slightly touch them, but like that's what we wanted. Py, which cadmium? I think it's the deep version. We've been alternating back and forth between a cadmium red deep and a regular cadmium throughout these palettes. Mostly because whatever they're using for Volcano Red is a cadmium red. Pigment wise, pigment number wise, it's a cadmium red. The issue is, however it's mulled or whatever dispersal agent they're using makes it have a different particle size. Um, it's more yellow. And so these aren't going to look identical because the cadmium red's wrong. Or the red pigment we're using is wrong. That being said, we have been getting closer than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it look like a pan? Oh, in a pan, like you can see the yellow and the red are both actually separating out on top. I don't know if you can get the camera's actually picking that up. But it's sort of got like yellow pockets and it's got red pockets. So this was poured from a 5ml tube because Jackson's have them on sale. Now it's green. Okay, we're gonna come back to it. <laughs> we're gonna come back to it because I need to think about it for a second. Desert gray is PY in black. which is actually a mix that I've done before. I think it was in my fall palette this year. And it's a great mix. The trick is having enough black that you just sort of get the peak of yellow. I think that's correct even though it's still darker. I think that's just pigment size. Now we get to do my least favorite mix. Uh, the one that I've had in my palette for probably six months. I bought it because I couldn't figure out where you'd use it. And I wanted to see if it was actually this interesting in person. And it is. It really does separate that red. It 
eat all the cadmium. And so we're going to add a bunch more cadmium red. And now we've made a red, which is not what we want. And we're going to add some more green. The trick here is that both pigments sort of eat each other up. And so you need to create... Mm -hmm. Oops. Like, if I flip around my palette. So the red, the red's totally floating on top. But is actually starting to float out here. So I'm actually going to leave that. I'm going to come back here. I'm really happy with that orange, especially because they've touched by accident and it's almost seamless where they blend other than the fact that there's like a cutout here because I didn't mean for them to touch. We're going to try this with the cadmium red light, which isn't what I think it is. But at this point, I am used to this project yeah, so being what I think it isn't. Red. Mm, yeah, let's, let's watch that. So it's quite a lot of yellow, like an almost absurd amount of yellow. And I will say that none of these pigments on my palette want to mix with each other at all, which is pretty normal for them. They're all different particle sizes and granulating pigments will always separate out on your palette, just some more than others. And in this case, they are separating out quite a lot because I'm working with a whole bunch of different mixes and not really mixing them thoroughly. I'm okay with that. I don't know what I've done to create that, but I'm okay with that. I am like slightly less okay with this. It doesn't have the right amount of red. So now I'm almost wondering if it's a mix of cadmium red and cadmium red deep. Are they playing with two different size pigment particles? Yes, they are. Cool. So, if you're making desert green yourself, use two different cadmium reds. So that you've got the variation. Oh, this is so contaminated. So that you've got the variation in particle size. Because there just isn't enough variation in the single version. It's still too red, but I think if I add a touch of green, and it gets to go here. Hopefully, we'll see the red do its thing. But I might have added too much green and all the red might be gone. Pigments are finicky. Um, if you've seen any of the paint mulling videos on YouTube, you've probably seen them mix colors together where you don't think they're going to end up with the color that they get. And that's because some pigments totally eat up other pigments. And PG29, I'm oh, sorry, PG26 is one of those colors where it can totally eat up other pigments. Oh, 
using the inside of these. Yes. Use the Daniel Smith one. Use Mahogany Brown. And Aquarius Black. There we go. P Y one fifty nine P G twenty six P R one O eight P R one O eight P E R seven P P R thirty three P B K eleven. All right. So I would actually say that this was probably the closest to this. It didn't have as much of the red separation, but you have the same like green and red halo effect. This, the red sort of, the red and green flipped. And so what was green in this one is red in this one. And this one, you just like lost the red altogether, which is sort of what I expected based on how much green I accidentally added to it. But it's a color I've never figured out how to use. And I paint quite a lot. Let's try it one more time. Okay. Let's add a tiny bit of the light version. And we're actually just gonna wet the page. Oh, this is just brown at this point. We are just painting with brown. I think it's too red. I do enjoy the process though of like watching the pigments settle out of each other. I think it's so magical. You're too red. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Do green. Let's do the deep. So it looks green in its pan. I'm now using, looking at the pan as a reference for the color, which I actually do pretty often, just because it gives you a good indication of like what the color looks like. So that was way too red. It is almost sort of like peely in the pan. I would think that it had a thalo green in it as well, just to get that bright green along the edge. But apparently not. This is the last attempt. Mostly because I'm running out of space. I'm not really sure what to try at this point. Oh? Is that it? Oh, did we do it? 
So our green isn't quite bright enough, but we do have like the dark red and then like the red speckling. Oh, I'm happy with that. It's not, it's not all the way there, but I'm happy with that. All right. Look at that. One palette left. 